Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 13. Uh, lucky day 13 of, uh, of the month of May. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. 861, score after flipping matrix. You're given an M by N binary matrix. A move consists of toggling each value, rows and columns, to 1 and 0. Okay rows or column. Each row of the matrix will be binary score and the score return the highest maximum score after returning number of moves. Okay. So we could keep on going and then um, flipping them. Um, hmm. I think I'm what I'm trying to think right now and I don't have any ideas quite immediately which I don't know how I feel about that, but, uh, but the, the, you know, there, there are a couple of concepts that I'm, I'm playing around with in my head. The first is that obviously you can, you can only, not that you can only, but you should only, um, or like the minimal path, if you will, uh, is toggling each row or column at most once, because if you toggle the same row or column twice, it does nothing, right? So I think that's the key, the first thing. Hmm, 20 is interesting, but not that interesting enough for us to like just do brute force and not think about think about it. I think there are some easier concepts here. Hmm. Like I, I think the ideas that I'm thinking about right now are all greedy, which is why I'm not really talking as much. Because the greedy problems or greedy solutions rather um, requires a bit of proof, and I'm just trying to play play through it, them in my head to see whether um, they can be done. Right? Um, hmm. Just the sum of these numbers. Yeah, I mean, okay, that part makes sense. I don't know. I'm just re reading the problem in case I mis misread it, but it seems pretty okay. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think, right? I mean, these examples are kind of terrible, so I, I don't know that. Hmm. Like, I feel like this is, um, there is this idea that is in my head where um, anytime you can make an improvement, just keep on doing it. I don't know that that reaches um, an optimal, though. Like in this case, initially, I mean, there are a couple of them, right? Um, but if you flip the second column, the vertical column, you'll immediately get one more. So you should definitely just do it because you just get one more, right? And then now, looking at the last row after that, you're like, okay, well, if I flip it, I get three more. And then now you flip, t and then you kind of get this answer. But, it, but that's not like, I don't know that you can prove that, right? Hmm. So I am like struggling a little bit on this one for some reason. I'm, and usually the, the reason why you're struggling or I'm struggling um, is that I'm missing an observation. Uh, something that I have to notice a property or an invariant or something like this about the problem that ma makes it click. And yeah, right now I'm not really seeing it. But I, th I think the the convergence thing makes sense is in, in that it gives you a better solution. I just don't know that it gives you the overall best solution, right? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think the 20 is actually interesting because there are 400 cells, right? 
if it was maybe slightly smaller, then you can actually do a brute force. You could brute force either um, all possible columns, two to the N or two to the C, if you will, and then just go through the entire thing of greedy on the rows or something like this. But, um, hmm. Oh, I really have no... Wait, am I miss? Oh, wait, I think I'm... Okay. <sighs> I'm an idiot. Five minutes and I, I misread the problem. I was wondering how... I I think I find, I, mean, I looked at this example and actually it matches what I was thinking up in my head. But I'm just being dumb. Uh, sorry, friends. Because I, I looked at this example, I'm like, okay, that's how I would do it. If you're trying to maximize the number of ones, which is how I read this. But... uh. But I saw the, I finally re read the example and saw that it actually wanted it, it represented as a binary, and so, okay. So now you try to maximize that. So then now the answer is actually very obvious. I am just I just read misread the problem, um. And and this is obvious in the same way that what was that? Was that like the contest? Oh, quick secret reward: get ten coins. Uh, is it this one? No. Hmm. I don't know, uh, but I think when when you uh, maybe I don't maybe it was last week I don't remember <laughs> my memory is kind of old these days. Um, maybe I gotta you know maybe someone's gonna send me to a farm upstate at some point and uh, I don't know and then things happen. But no, uh, but my my what I was gonna say is that okay. So now what we want to do is just optimize. Um, What we want to do is optimize the number of ones in the most significant digits, right? Um, because in in a way, this is greedy in that sense. Because obviously, if you have one, like if you look at a, if you look at a a, a five digit binary number, for example, or six digit in this case, it can be all ones, and it doesn't matter if if we just flip it to represent this, right? In this case, this number will add more to the final result than this number no matter what and in that case it is greedy so okay so we can definitely do that uh, and yeah and you could kind of think about the sum in in a very different way as well right yeah 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 because basically, the way that I'm going to do it is do it row first. And the row first is just a very simple of let's make the first bit a, a, a 1. Because what well, we just showed you, right? It doesn't matter anything else. And, and then after that, can we further optimize? And the answer is yes, because then now we just column by column, right? Of okay. You can now look at the, the rows or the, yeah, the rows independently, and then now you have each column. And if you have more ones in that columns, that's what you want. So you just take the of that. So okay. So that's basically the strategy is that get the first get Yeah yeah. So yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna do it in a lazy way, but but we can do that, right? So for each row, if grid uh with grid of i of zero is equal to zero, we want to flip. Um, I, I, miss, I apologize. Uh, I, I misread this for five minutes because I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm just not good at these things these days, right? It is what it is, right? Then uh, IJ is, uh, what's it called? Uh, I mean, there, there are a number of ways you can do it, right? Just flip it. Okay. And then now. Now we just have to count the number of things on each column. And you could have done this in one loop, but it's fine, right? Uh, for each column, right? Um, J. And the reason why you can do that is because you can think about it as lining them up in an addition, right? Like for example, um, like if you and this is just regular arithmetic. If you don't have if you, I mean this is binary, but but you can also think about it as not binary, but non-binary 
Oh, I guess the first one has to be one in this case, right? And then here, if you sum it up, just count it up, right? So now you have three, one, three, three, one, one, one. Of course, if you want to keep it binary, there's going to be carry. But we could deal with carry later. We can just, you know, just add it up now. And here now, we say, okay, well, we flip the second column. We're going to get two, one, two ones instead of one, one, right? So then now... We, we return this into two. And then basically we do this for every column, right? So then now for each column, um, if, uh, what's it called, cos of j, if c minus, well, if this is less than c minus this, then we just convert it to this, right? This is basically just how you flip the number of things all together. And then at the very end, then you have your answer, right? So answer is equal to zero for <coughs> um, J in range of C, right? And now we can do shift and add basic stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, a little bit confusing to look at because of the... Um, of the uh, the carry bits, if you want to call it that, but it should be fine. But that said, it should be fine, but it's not fine. Why is that? I don't know. Let's take a look. <laughs> uh, maybe I made some mistake somewhere, or maybe I have an off by one somewhere, which ha also happens, right? So we want to. Okay. So, well, I mean, four is definitely not. Oh, oh, oh! This is not C. This is row, right? Um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Silly mistake. Uh, of course, you have rows number of of things, but I, I yeah. All right, there you go. Uh, this is gonna be linear time, linear space. Again, I I want to remind that when I say linear time, linear space, that um, the input is R times C. So linear time means O of R times C, and in space, I I technically. Depending on how, how, whatever, like we we do flip the original column, so that makes uh, the original rows, so that makes it, for, I always count it as extra space because you really should not mock with this. I'm just kind of lazy in the implementation. If you really want, you can make a copy of it and then change it, which makes it linear space, right? Which is R times C. Um, and that's pretty much it. Everything is also, you know, obviously linear or c constant inside the linearness or whatever. This is sublinear, really. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Another problem that I haven't done in five years. That is interesting. How did I do it last time? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I probably read it correctly last time, but I, I kind of voted to different functions, which is kind of nice. Uh, good job, pass Larry. Uh, and did it in one loop instead of breaking down the two. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to do an extra farm after this. So stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see you all later and take care. Bye-bye.